Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you to Be So Creative, and it's our monthly ruler of the month, little tips and tricks on a Thursday. Um, this month we will be using the Paisley template, and we put it here on the black so that you can see it. It's kind of a big ruler, so it was a little challenging for me this time to really kind of figure out what I wanted to do with it. I came up with a couple of designs and then I have another one in my head that I'm not really sure it's going to fit, but we'll, I'll show you that one next time if it works out. I did want to say a little bit of, I guess, things, good things to know when before we get started. Your rulers come and they kind of look a little cloudy. And I just wanted you to know that there is a film on the front and the back of the ruler. So once you take this film off, then um, it'll be nice and clear for you. And I have my markings on my ruler. I want to put them back. These little arrows. Because I was working on something. So you're, you'll have a really nice clear ruler and you can see that it's got um, lots of different lines on it. And this was our ruler the last time. I've been using this one as well and I pulled it out just to show you some of the things that I've been working on since we last uh, saw each other. As always, they provide a, t a little sheet with different ideas for the ruler that you've got. And they also have online at handyquilter.com slash ruler of the month. There is a video on using the ruler as well. So lots of education for the rulers when you get them. On the back of each package, there's also design ideas that they have for the ruler as well. Okay. To get started, I... We've got a lot of people saying good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I thought it was at 930. I just walked in, so I'm a little rattled. But um, uh, I had a lot of fun while since I've last been on, and I've tried to use the rulers and not get too far ahead of myself. And I want to show you... I first want to talk to you about a couple of things. These little guys are ruler stickers, and this one is Fruity Fiesta Palette, <laughs> just because we can't say there's this is another color, and it has red, yellow, and purple, and then this is just ruler stickers, and there's green and lime and orange in there, and these are reusable, and I've got blue, and I've got red in use, and you can take them off and move them, but it really gives you a reminder of what line are you on, where, what's your orientation that you need to have on your ruler. So I just wanted to show you these. These are available at the shop. They run $7.99, and there's a bunch there's of them in bunch. there. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch. 192. So if you lose one or two, you're still good. So we have these on our website if you're interested in getting any of these to go on your rulers. It's enough that you can put them on and not worry about having to peel them off and put them on another ruler. So let me show you what I've done since we were last here. I have started echoing my outline on my petals and this was our design last time. I just did wavy lines and since you were here I filled them in just to kind of give it a little bit of depth and texture. I did a wavy line sideways and then I filled it in and then I did some outside echoes right here and filled them in as well on both sides. Okay. Then I took and the rulers that I used, I used our first three rulers so I used our flower power to get the wavy lines and then I used this flip side to get my 
curved lines and I'm using it to do the outline of the petals. And if you know me, you know I'm not Miss Precise. And so, yeah, Beautiful. you can see that they're not exactly even. But um, you, when you get done with it, you really can't even tell. So this is starting off pretty different. And so when I get done with that, it'll look great. That's the one nice thing about these panels. They're very, very forgiving. So I did, uh, I guess, curved lines right here. You want to run your finger along there, I think. Yeah, so can, can you see it? Yeah, there we go. That's good. And so there's two lines together and then one further apart and two lines. And then over here, we were here the last time. This was my crosshatch. So today with the paisley, I was kind of fiddling around yesterday with it. And like I said, this is a really big ruler. And so you can see that it takes up most of the space if you just lay it down into a petal. So I chose bigger petals to work with. And I just started doing some lines right here. I don't know if I like them. They may not be here the next time or they might be here. <laughs> I don't know. So then I decided I just kind of wanted to do sort of a clam shellish uh, little design. And that's what we're going to be working on. To get the ruler on to the foot, your needle has to be up. Oops. Can you get it? And then no, it will don't. slide right over the hopping foot. The other thing I had a question from last time is, can you talk about the invisible thread? I like invisible thread. Some people don't like it. They think, well, why would you use it if you can't see it? But I like it on these projects because what you see when it's all done and it's hanging, you see all that dimension. I love working with all different types of thread, and for this one, I just wanted to use the clear thread. I do have Aurifil on the bottom. I had mentioned that last time. And when you're loading clear thread, it can be challenging because you really have to adjust your tension. So in your bobbin, your bobbin tension has to be fairly loose. You, you, you have to feel the tension a little bit Otherwise, you don't have any tension at all. So in your bobbin, you're going to run a little bit looser. And then on the top, if you're running a cone, I've never had a, any trouble with it. I just go ahead and thread the, my machine just like I normally do. If you're running on a spool, you want to have a spool pin. This is an Avante. Remember, this is our rental machine that we're playing with. But you want to have a spool pin, so I have a spool pin here. If you're on a, a Amara or a Forte or a Fusion, or Amara or Forte, the newer machines, their spool pin, their spool um, towers are on the side, and you can still load um, a horizontal spool pin on the spool pin itself of the machine. I know that's a tongue twister. Okay. Um. We've got just a, uh, we have a question, okay, um, and we have a comment. Uh, Lynn Martinez says hi, happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Nancy uh, Stalker is from Indiana, and she wants to know um, if you have a platform platform <laughs> below the needle to rest the ruler on. And she says your lines look pretty good. So you want to <laughs> address the platform beneath? Okay. So let me finish on the the clear thread. The one you. Clear thread is like a delicate thread. If you have a loose bobbin, you have to have a looser tension on the top. If you still have a lot of breakage, what you need to do is on this little guy right here that looks like a barber pole, only take the thread through two holes instead of three. That will reduce your tension as well. So I have mine on all three. My tensions are fairly loose and I, I haven't had a problem yet. Um, whenever you're using rulers, yes, you have to have a ruler base underneath, and we do have a ruler base underneath. Mm -hmm. And at the end, as soon as I break my thread, I'll take it off and, and uh, show you that as well. You always have to use the thicker rulers, and because otherwise the rulers can go under 
the hopping foot as it's moving. So these are the thicker rulers. So we're going to do a little bit on this uh, pedal itself. So we kind of had uh, mar our markings laid up and I just kind of visually look to see what I want to do and if you want to you can always mark it out prior to see if you're going to like it and when I was playing with my panel at home to do a couple more petals I did do that so that's why the others look a little bit better and so whenever you get ready to start you want to have good control of the ruler. You don't want it to flip up as you're going around because you don't want to break your ruler. So I want to I want to gently press down. If I press too hard, I can't move my machine because I'm pressing on top of the ruler base and it won't allow the machine to go. So I'm going to turn it on and go. And then I'm going to move it to where I want. And like I said, I'm kind of visually looking at it to see what I like. And Marcia is usually my helper here, and she's video videoing, so she won't say, no, that doesn't look good. That's real nice. And then I can go ahead and... So I'm going to go ahead and then I can walk myself up and this doesn't go well. And I'm actually stopping on my sewn line. Let's see. And I'm kind of just turning it to see what I want it to look like. Go ahead and tack down my my stitches. Oh, look right. how pretty that looks. That looks really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do y'all like how that looks? Let me rethread real quick while you're looking at it. This looks pretty. Came out, came out okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so you see the threads that are right here? Those are my basting threads. And remember that I had talked about having the petal basted before I started because I'm, I started in the middle and I'm working my way out. And I wanted to keep everything anchored so that I, it wouldn't pucker and it would stay nice and straight on the bottom. So as you're sewing and you get this part sewn, you can just start working your basting stitches out of there. Thank you. You're, you're getting, you're getting beautifuls and they like what you've done. Oh, thank you everybody. So as you pull, yeah, as you pull them out, then it, your design kind of takes on a new, mm, a new beautiful. flavor. So this is the ruler base that's on the machine. If you don't have a handy quilter or you have a long arm that the company just for some reason doesn't have a ruler base, we can still, there's a company that we can get one ordered for you. So then the other pedal I want to show you is this one. And this is the size of our ruler. Mm. So all I did was make the yin yang uh, little guy and I just put it on like this and then I just sewed this. Then 
what I wanted to do to really accent that, I'm going to start down here. And I w I'm going to just meander around it. And, you know, meander is just such a, you know, easy stitch to do. And sometimes people think, oh, you know, why are you just meandering when you can do so much more? Wait and see. So I want to talk to you about stitch length, too. The smaller the, the design that you want to do, let's say you want to do pebbling. The smaller the pebbling, the smaller the micro stitching you want to do, you want to increase your stitches per inch because if you're trying to make a circle, a small circle, and your stitches are 10 stitches per inch, it's going to look really funny and it's not going to look very rounded. So you want to do a small stitch. So today, um, this has all been done in 11 stitches per inch. So I will still stay at 11 because I'm not going to go too, too small. But if I don't like the way the stitches look, I will go up to 12. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. center stand out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut my thread so you can see it. So now just with this, and it can go even smaller, but I was in more of a hurry. I could come up to the edge if I wanted to, but I kind of wanted to stay a little bit away from it. And look how dimensional this looks right there. And when you get it up on a wall, that's one thing that's really, really going to stand out. If you think that this is too open for you, you can just go ahead and you can do another echo line inside and just give it a, a whole nother look um, as it's well. So pretty. It really is beautiful. So that's what I've gotten so far. And I thank you for joining us today. And... I hope to see you again next month, and we will be doing another demonstration for the next ruler. This Saturday is Pick Up Your Ruler Day um, here at Be So Creative. We are shut down for two weeks, but you can come and call the shop, and we will run it out to your car. If you are not a member of the Ruler of the Month for Handy Quilter and you would like to be, uh, please give us a call at 575-523-2000. We'll sign you up and you will get all the rulers that we have already done and then you'll get the next three per month. Do you have a panel available? Panels are available online at, at our web store um, and our website is BeSoCreative.com and no, we... No, no. Oh. BeSoCreative hyphen NM. Oh, let Marsha tell you that one. Okay, so <laughs> our our website is be so creative and it's S E W creative hyphen nm.com. So don't forget the hyphen and the nm.com. 
I always go through Google, so I never do all that. <laughs> and I work here, so I never need to go online to shop. But, you know, sorry about that. But, yes, we do have panels online. This one is the pastel. And I do believe Sharon put on a scarlet one. And the scarlet one is just beautiful. Do you want me to show that one? Sure. Um, let Marcia tell you that website again and let me go get that panel. <laughs> well, while, while she's doing that, guys, I'm going to show you again this beautiful quilting that she's done. Isn't it fantastic? Oh, my gosh. That crosshatch is just amazing. So, again, our website is www.besew. C R E A T I V E hyphen N M dot com. And uh, Sharon and Carla have been working diligently to get all of our products online. We're still working on some of them, but hang in there with us. We're, we're I think the girls are rocking it. So um, just some, just some information about that. Okay. And Steph, you've got it there? I do. All and right, here's this one. Hopefully Sharon's watching. Sorry, Sharon, these better be online. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pastel panel. Beautiful. Oh, that's so pretty. And this one is called Leaf Like the Tree. This one is great for Christmas. I'm actually working on one of these at home. Oh, that's so pretty. So there's that one. And this one is called Leaf? Leaf. Leaf, okay. L-E-A-F is in Frank. And this is our scarlet one. This is another great Christmas panel. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so pretty. What rich colors. Mm -hmm. mm. What's the name of this one? This one is our scarlet one. Scarlet, okay. And the nice thing about these, I'm going to put it here, Marcia, so okay. we can see. Perfect. The ones that we carry are the ones I picked because look how well you can see the petals and see oh, where you're yes. going. So that's why we had picked these. So really fairly easy to, to see, fun to do. and Great place to practice. Great pr place to practice and costs about $15.99. Let's see. Yeah, they're about $15.99. So between that and your thread and your batting and you practice and it turns out okay, you, you've you got a Christmas gift for less than 20 bucks. So. All right. Uh, Steph, can you tell them again um, the batting that you've used oh, for yes. these so yes. that they can, because um, I think one of the best things about this is Steph's got two different battings on here and that really gives the puff yes. that uh, makes these stitches and these petals stand out. So do you want to tell them about that? Yes. So I, I have my backing, then I have a cotton batting, and it's a low, it's a medium loft. It's not a high loft, so it's not really, really thick. And then I have a wool batting. The reason I have the cotton, the cotton will give it a little bit more stability because the wool is a loose weave and it really will move around. But that wool really gives it the dimensional effect. Yeah, look at that. And oh. I want to show you one thing on these petals once we get to it. There's one petal in particular that is my absolute favorite. <laughs> and I think that it makes the whole panel. Okay. So up at the top, this petal right here has a dark area. And when you get this one quilted out, it actually looks like the petal has Fold. folded. And it is, to me, that's like the most gorgeous petal of them all. So I'm pretty excited when I get to the outside how I can use my rulers to really make this one look like it's folded because that really gives it that 3D dimensional look. Like, oh mm -hmm. my goodness, this is a real, a real petal. Uh, my husband, I made one for my house, I made one for my cousin, I gave mm -hmm. one to my boss, and my husband said, after I've done three and a half of them, he said, are you going to do one for each season? So I have a whole lot more to do, and, and my husband, you know, he's not a, a sewer of any kind, he's appreciator of what I do and stay out of trouble, but for him to ask for one for 
for every season to me says a lot about how pretty they really are. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, part of our Ruler of the Month, and I hope you look forward to coming back. Two questions. Oh, two questions. Okay. Yay. Um, let me see. It was uh, Lynn Martinez. Mm -hmm. Would like to find out the price of the rulers. Is it is oh. it a, is it a special price every month? Or explain that so they get it. Okay, so Hanny Quilter has done a ruler of the month. This is the seventh one, and we have to have a, at least six people to join. And if we do, then we continue to have it. And and we've been very blessed that we have more than twenty people at a time that join. And in turn, I'm very blessed with a whole bunch of rulers now, and. The Ruler of the Month Club, it has a set price for six months, and this round is $19 per month, and it, it saves you about 44%. Um, once these rulers go out um, that you can order any time after the Ruler of the Month, they hold the rulers, then the price goes up significantly. I think it's about $44 that you save. And then... It's always a guessing game whether they'll do it again, and we've always been surprised and delighted when we just get ready to finish one round and then they tell us the next round. So it's um, once you sign up, you you have six rulers that will be coming. They do a bonus at the end of something. It's been different every time, and then you have the option whether to keep going or not. Every time you have to sign up, we don't automatically sign you up. Okay. It, um, and Nancy Stocker said, are the, are the panels and such in our website? And Nancy, we think so, but we will check. And um, if they're not in here when we get off of here, uh, check back at the end of the day because I will, I will make sure that Sharon pops them in there. I think they are. I, think I know that are. Sharon ha and I had talked about it because she's the one that told me, they needed to go on the website, so if not, Sharon will have, have them taken care of. And uh, I want to tell everybody I'm so thankful that Sharon is around because if anybody else asked me to do something on the web, <laughs> we would laugh. But um, she's amazing, and she's working tirelessly since this has come up, and so I really appreciate everything that she's doing uh, on the Internet for her. Okay, Nancy has one other question. Okay. Um, she said she will take one. So, okay. Nancy, you got to let us know what color. So, yes. um, uh, you can let us know that in a bit. But um, she wants to know if these can be used on your domestic machine. Yes. So, um, yes, you can do these on a domestic machine. If you're going to do ruler work and your machine does not have a ruler foot available, we, we can get a ruler foot ordered for you. We just need to know what machine it is and the model it is. And if you know the shank size, that's fine. If not, we can get it. And if you, if you want to do the panel and you want to use a ruler, but you don't want to do it on your machine, you can always use your rulers as like a template. You draw on what you want, and then you take your panel to the machine, and then you just do it without the ruler. Okay. That's another way of doing it because some people just don't like to to use rulers. Is there another question? Anybody else? Oh, uh, Tris Fisher wants to know if the panel came in purple. We don't have it here in purple. The um, I don't even remember don't if remember there it was. Being one. Yeah, I don't remember seeing a purple one. We'll have to check. Yeah. So Tris, we'll have to check. Yeah. Okay. There's the big man. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, I hope you enjoy taking the time to do one for yourself. And please join us again next month. And it will be on the third Thursday, Thursday. of the month. And... Yeah. Nine at nine o'clock if I can keep remembering that I keep thinking it's 9 30 so but we'll see you at nine o'clock on the third Thursday and it's Mountain Standard Time Happy Thanksgiving. thank you for joining us we wish you a safe and healthy Thanksgiving and again thank you for supporting us we really appreciate it bye-bye